Okay, you've been underneath this thing, messing with brake lines at the Harbor Freight Jack Stands. YOLO. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dad Mods. This is the E30 build series. Yeah. So, uh, what are we doing today, Donnie? Uh, today, we're going to play with <laughs> wires and try not to screw stuff up. Yeah. Uh, our big task that we have to tackle is getting the SR harness to work with the BMW harness. Uh, you got a couple ways you can go about doing this. Uh, first one is to pay a buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which, you're my buddy, so... <laughs> oh, cool, great. <laughs> so I'm nominated. Uh, the second nice. way is to merge the Nissan harness into the BMW one using the C101 plug and using prints and figuring it out. And option three is going through a company called Wire Specialties, Specialist. Specialist. Um, Specialist. It's going to cost you like 800 bucks, give or take, depending on your options. And they'll build you a pre-made plug-and-play harness ready to go. You just tell them what you want, what you need, and they'll do it for you. Uh, I spent all my money on aluminum stuff. So <laughs> we're going to merge the two harnesses ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, you know it's a 12 volt harness, and in this case, we're not dealing with anything overly complicated. This is a 80s car that's getting a 90s car engine swapped into it. So we aren't dealing with things like CAN bus and these overly complicated circuits. No, it's all pretty to, straightforward. Crap. <laughs> so I think what the bulk of this is going to be is just trying to make it look clean and make sure that we are powering the uh, Nissan ECU correctly. That we are giving the um, you know, the dash, the the right signals from the, the SR20 and, and all of that stuff. And then again, like really trying to make it look okay, make it look as clean as possible because we're putting it into a completely different shell. Yeah. So that's always a challenge. So I think step one is we probably just want to start cutting stuff. Just start hacking it all out and <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it'll be fine. Uh, I think first things first, let's get the SR harness in and kind of see how it's going to run. Yeah. To kind of figure out a main point for everything. Yeah, let's start plugging things in and figure out like where the harness comfortably sits. Because that's a big thing you got to think about. Oh, yeah. It's like, what does the harness comfortably sit at? Because it's already wrapped and whatnot. So, thanks for joining us, guys. Hopefully this is helpful. Let's dive in. Yeah. Crazy enough, it could work. It very well could work. <laughs> <laughs> it better work. <laughs> I think we got a game plan. So, uh, we're dealing with a right hand drive chassis that the SR20 came out of, and it's going into a left hand drive. So, you're going to have some of those, um, some of those differences where, like, the ECU generally passes through the passenger side. Well, in, um, a right-hand drive car, obviously your passenger side is on the opposite of an American, or a, excuse me, a left-hand drive car. So, um, we are going to end up, because this harness is usually on that side, we're going to redirect it back this way. Um, one nice thing we figured out is that uh, it kind of can, it doesn't look like it's going to be too kinked. You know, you, you don't want to have a pinching point on your harness. You don't want it to like bend too much. And it looks like it's going to be able to curl and come back this direction, especially if we take all this old tape off and kind of redo it and loom it ourselves. 
Um, that also positions this branch, you know, this is sort of like the main branch and then these kind of come off. Um, it positions it right in front of the hole that goes into the firewall, through the firewall. That also means boost control solenoid, um, the igniter, all, this piece, all these pieces that are on this plate can actually rest kind of in this battery tray spot. All that means now is that we've got a couple of wires that we need to kind of peel back and, and relocate. We've got to apply 12 volts to a couple of them, ignition 12 volts. And then we've got two MAF wires that we're gonna, or two or three, that we're gonna have to locate and then we're gonna have to extend and, and kind of solder in a MAF plug. Uh, we haven't decided 100% how we're gonna do that, if we're gonna run that through the C101 plug or if we're just gonna have it uh, in our own little loom going just across the engine. So that's to be determined, but this is awesome. We've kind of got a game plan of how we're going to do this. Next step is to start peeling back some of this tape uh, and get a look at how we want to run wires for the C101 plug and kind of how to re-loom it and make these wires sit comfortably. So let's grab a knife. Okay, so what our game plan is going to be is we're actually going to use the factory C101 plug. Now, if you're doing this on a facelift model, this will actually be a rectangle square shape. Uh, this is a pre-facelift car, so these are round. And again, on the uh, facelift model, some of the wiring colors might be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. But what we're going to actually do is everything we need to tie into, we're actually going to solder into this little pigtail that we made. So we're going to be able to use the factory clamp there, and this should just tie in nicely into our SR harness. Okay, so now that we have our harness hooked up and then everything kind of loosely ran, uh, it's time to start soldering some wires. So unfortunately, uh, whoever pulled this motor cut some of the wires. We have this chunk here we got to figure out still. Uh, but we need to extend our MAF wires because they need to go over to that side of the car. So at this point, we're going to actually just solder them together, run them, and then we're going to start tying into the C101 plug for the BMW side. Okay, so we have our math wires ran and we're ready to start pinning it. Um, we ended up buying this new pin with a pigtail from our local parts store. Uh, surprisingly, they had it on hand. Uh, your first pin is going to be your 12 volt wire. That's the black and white traced wire. Uh, your center wire is your ground and then your pin three is your signal wire. Now your uh, ground and signal wire are actually in a gray insulated kind of loom. Uh, make sure those are twisted together, you don't want any interference or anything like that, and then your 12 volt actually runs on the outside. So pretty self-explanatory, we're just going to pin this in, plug it in, and move on. Um, 
so this is your backup power 12 volt constant uh, to the ECU. So we just did an eyelet and luckily we had a nice little junction box here at the front because our battery is located in the back. And we're just gonna solder in this fuse holder, um, nice and simple. Uh, this takes a 15 amp fuse. Now you want to have this in just in case. I mean, the last thing you wanna do is fry your ECU. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna start merging the SR20 harness into the E30 harness. Now there's two very important things uh, on our build, and this is gonna be true for yours as well. This is a pre-facelift car. So our wires are different colors than the, than the facelift models. And this is also a J4 ECU SR20. So the pinouts and some of the wiring colors are gonna be different than other SR20s, depending on what you go with. Uh, with that being said, this is rather straightforward once you do all the legwork, which we have done. <laughs> Spent about an hour chasing some wires tonight. But essentially, uh, we have this bundle of wires here that are going to be ignition 12 volt. And luckily, we have a 12 volt ignition wire in our SR or in our E30 harness here. So you have a bunch of browns that run to different sensors. Um, this black white is what threw us through a loop tonight. Uh, this is actually your 12 volts for your ECU. And there's a second black white that runs to your math, your math sensor. Um, they're actually entwined inside the harness together and they both go to the ECU and both go their separate ways and you just need one to be 12 volt ignition. There's also a blue yellow and this black red that are switched as well. So we're gonna tie all of those together to our 12 volt ignition wire. This blue red, that's a 12 gauge here. This is for your coil. Uh, this actually has a coil wire on the E30 side. So that'll go to that guy. That's also a 12 gauge, so that's pretty straightforward. And then you have a red wire on the SR side. Uh, this is a constant 12 volt for the ECU, it's a backup. Uh, so we'll end up running this to the starter or the alternator wire, just so we have constant 12 volts. Everything else is on the E30 side, and we're actually just going to extend it. Uh, there is a wire in here for the oil pressure. So we'll extend that down to our sensor that's by our oil filter. We have an alternator wire. Pretty self-explanatory, that one goes to your alternator. And then you have a black yellow 12 gauge and this is your signal for your starter. We're going to extend that as well to our starter. There's a couple in here that we're not going to use. Uh, there's a coolant temp one. There's a oil level. Those are all for the dummy lights. Um, we might try to use them, we might not. But just to get started, uh, that's what we're going to show you today. Yeah, You're not using coolant temp because you've got a aftermarket exactly. gauge. I have an yep. aftermarket gauge. Um, the only thing that we're not going to be able to get to work is the tachometer. Uh, there's a company called Wire, Wiring Specialties. Got it right this time. Uh, <laughs> they actually make a module where you can put in the input from the SR and program it to put an output for the E30 dash. So we'll be going that route and we'll have a video on that once we get to that point. Heck yeah. Uh, one other detail is the that black and white wire. Um, now, which one, which pin are we connecting up to the switched ignition source on the C101? I believe this one is 37. So okay. There's 37 and 48 are the two pins. They're actually entwined. Um, from what we can find is the one for the MAF has a resistor in it. Unfortunately, when we test uh, ohms on our harness, we didn't have any reading of any resistance. They actually cut this harness before they shipped it to us because that makes sense. Uh, so I'm assuming they cut out that resistor and we're going to have to put one in later down the road. Yep. But that's, I mean, if you're doing this, you can put in a resistor. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, one thing we've got to determine is how, how that drops down to 5 volts for the math. Exactly. Yep. Could happen already. 
back in the harness that we don't know where they're joined also could happen at the MAF itself. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's the next step. Let's, uh, let's burn some stuff. Yeah, let's solder that endo. Breathe that lead smoke. Oh, God. Uh, I need to get heat strength. We're going to do 12 volt switch last because I'm a little concerned about combining 17 wires to one wire. <laughs> right. We're going to start with the coil. That's a nice, easy one. So let me get my heat strength. we need to extend from the C101 plug. Uh, one of them is for the starter, one is for the alternator, and the other one goes to your oil pressure switch. Uh, there will be a couple leftover wires still, but you don't need those. You can actually just cap them off. Uh, one's for your oil level, and one is for your coolant temp, but we're gonna be running an aftermarket gauge, so we're just gonna cap that one. So your first one we're gonna run is for the starter. It'll go from engine side of C101, which is black, yellow, to the starter, there's a plug that looks like this. Uh, it's got a black, white, 12 gauge wire. We just cut back about four inches and pigtail, we're gonna pigtail right off of it. So that's what that's gonna run to. Uh, the next one we need to run is for the alternator, which is, let's see here, which is this blue wire. Uh, yeah, it's like a 14 blue. Uh, so we're going to extend that one, goes to your alternator, and it goes to the smaller of the two wires, in this case off our alternator plug. It is a white with a red tracer. The other wire on the plug is a 12 gauge white, and that you can actually put an eyelid on and go right to the stud on the alternator because this wire needs 12 volts constant. So those are that. And the last one we're going to run is the oil pressure switch. Now that actually grounds out through the switch and we're going to just extend the brown green, it's like a 22 gauge, 18 gauge, uh, C101, uh, one wire right down to it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, everything else you can just cap off, so not too bad. There is a service light wire, which is this blue, no, it's white, blue. Uh, we're just going to leave this long and cap it. This is to reset your service light on the dash. So yeah, the other one is uh, for your fuel pump. This actually goes from the relay back to the fuel pump. So we'll probably extend this into the cab as well, wiring a fuel pump relay that's 12 volt ignition. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Hey guys, uh, so wrapping things up, um, biggest thing is to remember the C101 plug has basically everything that you need right in it, um, and then you're going to need a 12 volt constant as well. Be sure to check the description of this video because we're going to assemble as much written information as we possibly can with links as well. So not only are we going to try and provide you guys with everything in our video to give you a guide on how to do this, but um, also the description gives you links to where we sourced a lot of our information. 
Um, so you've got a couple of different references, but you know, the SR, it starts. Um, the video isn't out for any of that yet because we're, you know, we're a little bit behind with videos to having them current because of the way that we edit everything. Trying to make this video as detailed and useful as possible for you guys because I understand how frustrating and impossible it can be to have haphazard info everywhere. That was part of our issue, but we got it working. The car runs and drives, wiring works perfectly. So please let us know if you have any questions, um, comment, comment section, contact us directly on Instagram at dad mods official Facebook at dad mods. Um, we try and respond to everything that we get. And, um, you know, it's, uh, this is a really straightforward swap. So we hope that this makes it possible for more of you guys to put a turbo SR engine into an E30. It is a blast to drive. So hopefully this is valuable and, and gets you guys there as well. So, um, thanks. Consider, uh, doing the like and the subscribe crap. Uh, I know it's annoying that every single other channel does the, the begging for that stuff. It, it actually, you know, if you're not aware, it, it does make a big difference with, us getting our view counts up and our subscribers and working towards uh, monetization and that kind of thing because we put a, an incredible amount of time into trying to put these videos together so it all really is helpful so hey thanks a lot you guys uh so we'll see you on the next video